evening. God bless you. Evening, church. Welcome to Walking with Christ Church. For those of you who are watching from afar, from Facebook, God bless you. It's Friday. So those of you who are here, welcome in the name of Jesus. Yes. Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord, for, for seeing fit to bring us to this place this Friday night. Thank you yes. for carrying thank us Lord. through this week, through this day, through this hour, oh God. We thank you, Lord, that you saw fit to bring us to this place, Lord God, with a plan and a purpose in mind, oh God. Thank you, Lord. So we come in one accord, oh God, one mind, one body, one church, one purpose, oh God, one desire. Lord. And that is that we need you, Lord God. Hallelujah. We need you, Lord. We seek you, Lord. You are in this place, Lord. Hallelujah. See us in this place, Lord. We praise your holy name, O God, this night, for your name is worthy of all praise, O God. Blessed be the holy name of the Lord God Almighty. I thank you, Lord, that you are our rock and our shelter, O Lord. Thank you that you are our strong tower. Thank you that you are the Lion of Judah. Thank you that you are everlasting and all-powerful God. Thank you that you are almighty Lord. Blessed be his holy name. Blessed be the name of the Lord God Almighty. Hallelujah. We come, oh God. We come drawing near to you this night, oh God. We come with expectancy, oh Lord. Expecting to hear from you, oh God. To hear from you, oh God. To hear from you, your truth, oh God. We thank you in advance for everything that you're going to do this night, oh God. We thank you in advance for the word that we will hear this night, oh God. We thank you, oh God, that you continue to speak because you are real, you are alive, and you are good, oh God, and you continue to speak to your people. We thank you, oh God, that you are everlasting and faithful, that you never left us, that you never will, oh God, that there is none other than you, oh God, for you are faithful, you are good, you are mighty, you are beautiful, oh God, you are King of kings and Lord of lords, you are the almighty King, our Savior, our firm foundation, our mighty rock on which we stand, oh God. I thank you. I give you praise. I give you glory. I give you honor. I give you praise. I give you glory. I give you honor. I give you praise. I give you glory and I give you honor, oh God. There is none other than you, my Lord. We praise your holy name this night, oh God. We praise your holy name, oh God. Yes, oh God. There is none other than you. For you are good, oh God. Everlasting and powerful, oh God. Yes. You are incomparable, God. You are holy. You are mighty, Lord. And I thank you. Father, we thank you, Lord, right now for the mind of Christ over each and every one of us. Anyone and everyone that can hear our voice this night, proclaim that mind of Christ over you at home or wherever you may be watching this service. Amen. And you know there's power and authority when we open our mouths and we say something in the name of Jesus. So right now, go ahead and command anything that is not of God to go from you in Jesus' name. We thank you for your light in this place, oh God. We cover this place with the blood of the Lamb, Lord God. And I encourage you wherever you are to do the same. Cover wherever you are with the blood of the Lamb in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord God, that nothing would disturb you as you are listening, as you're worshiping, as you're hearing the word. Hallelujah. That nothing would distract you in Jesus' name. That everything that happened this day doesn't really matter, whether good or bad or in between. Hallelujah. But what matters is that we serve a God that's still alive, that still reigns, that still rules, that's still on his throne of mercy, that lives in us, that is for us and not against us. Hallelujah. God. And he's given another opportunity for this time. Yes. Yes. Thank you, Lord. So we thank you, Lord. We delight in you, Father God. Hallelujah. And we come just to lift your name on high. Thank Hallelujah. You, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Blessed Hallelujah. be the name of thank the Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. And all God's people say. Amen. 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 Our God never tires and he never grows weary and he never stops.
God. Hallelujah. We are you, O God. Mighty God, you are faithful, God. Faithful. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We thank you for never turning away from us, even when we turn away from you. There's a grace when the heart is under fire. Another way when the walls are closing in. Where I used to be and this reckoning, I know I will never be alone. There was another in the fire standing next to me. There was another in the waters holding back the seas. And should I ever need reminding of how I've been set free? Cross that bears the burden Were another time for me There was another in the fire Hallelujah Oh my death that has ever needs The waters Hallelujah I'm no longer a slave to my sin Yo 
Lord, Heavenly Father, I thank you, Lord, for another, getting us through another week, Heavenly Father, Lord. Lord, I pray for each and every one of us, Lord, that we just cast our burdens towards you, Heavenly Father, Lord, because your yoke is lighter, Lord. I pray, Lord, that we will know you as good, good Father, Lord, for that's who you are, Lord. And I pray, Lord, for each and every one of us, Lord, that we'll have open hearts and open ears to receive your word, Lord, and bless the offering. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. church and who is seeking God Amen. and who needs yep. to hear from him and knows that they need him more than the very air Amen. that they breathe because praise is the breakthrough. Amen. It breaks through all the layers Amen. of life, Amen. all the layers of stress, all yep. the layers of your day, all the layers of pain and heartbreak. Yep. Hallelujah. All the layers. Amen. Praise, praise, praise is the breakthrough and there is no breakthrough yep. in this place. Amen. Hallelujah. The splendor of Clothed in majesty, let all the earth rejoice, let all the earth rejoice. He wraps himself in light, and darkness tries to hide, and trembles at his voice. And trembles at his voice. How great is our God. Sing with me how great is our God. And all will see how great, how great is our God. Time is in his hands, beginning and the end, beginning and the end. The Godhead three in one, Father, Spirit, Son, the Lion and the Lamb, the Lion and the Oh, great. 
is our God. Name above all names, worthy of all praise, and my heart will sing how great is our God. Lord, we don't move forward without you, Lord God. We need your presence. We need you, Lord God. We need you, Lord God. We need you, Lord God. We seek you, Lord God, and we thank you for being with us, Almighty, King of kings and Lord of lords, deserving of true worship and true praise, true attention and adoration and exaltation unto you, mighty God, mighty King, mighty Lord. We come, Lord, not for religion, Lord, not for repetition, not to play church, oh God, but to lift your name on high, oh God, for you deserve it all, oh giver of life, giver of life, giver of salvation, giver of good things, Savior. We thank you this night for our salvation, oh God. We thank you for, Lord God, that you hear the prayer of the repenting son and daughter of God. We thank you, Lord, for forgiving us this night. We thank you for having mercy on us this night. We thank you that you can be found, oh God. Yes, we thank you that you are in the midst, O oh God. We thank you that you care about each and every one of us, O oh God. We thank you, Lord, for that touch that we can only receive from you, O oh God, that heals, that sets free, Lord God, that moves mountains, O oh God, that gives us the strength and the courage to continue on this path, O oh God. So we thank you, Lord God, for who you are, O oh mighty King and mighty Lord and mighty God and mighty Savior, worthy of all attention without any distraction in our hearts undivided worship oh god undivided prayers oh god undivided hearts one heart one mind one body after you lord god for we indeed are your bride and you are coming for that bride without spot or blemish and may we be found pure and holy before you lord god as you continue that good work in each as you continue that good work in each and i thank you lord for heeding every cold heart in this place and that is listening from afar for warming our hearts for heating our hearts for Lord that we would remember that you love us God with an everlasting love that you are real that you are powerful that you are mighty that you are able to do anything and everything Lord and you love us oh God and you see us oh God and you have not left us your gaze has not left us mighty one of Isaac Abraham and Jacob and we thank you for each Lord God and every thought that you had towards us we thank you that your eyes don't escape us we thank you that you don't turn away from us. We thank you that you don't throw us away when we deserve it. We thank you, Lord God, this night that you are our God and indeed we are your king. And we bless you. We seek you, Lord. We need to hear your word, oh God. And we thank you that it was the goodness that came straight from your heart that saw fit to bring us to this place this night for such a time as this, oh God. And we thank you for the word that you've given the pastor, oh God. And we thank you that it'll penetrate the mind, the heart, the body, the soul for those who want it, Lord God. May we all desire you this night, oh God. Blessing and honor unto the mighty King of kings and Lord of lords. We bless you. We truly need you. We truly need our ears to hear you. We need our hearts to be softened unto you, Lord God, and our eyes to see. And we thank you for revealing who we are, for revealing who you are, Lord God. And thank you for continuing this walk with us. For indeed, we will follow you all the days of our life, Jesus. For I have decided to follow Jesus. And me and my house will serve you, mighty God, all the days of our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen and amen. amen. And with that, let's stand and open up our word. Amen. God is good, amen. All the time. Let's open up our Bible to Ephesians 6, verse 10. And you there, say amen. 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 And it says in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord, and in his power of his might. 
Put on the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to stand against the ways of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take upon you the whole armor of God, Hallelujah. that ye may be able to withstand Amen. in the evil day, and have done all to stand. You may be seated, please. Amen. I love the way God does things, you know, right? God has a way of doing things and moving when he wants to move. And though it might make people uncomfortable when he does that, Amen. right? God made people got uncomfortable. They're like, oh man, they started singing. Oh man, they started praying. You know? People get uncomfortable, right? And I believe that God did that for a reason. Amen? Amen. Because people like things to go smoothly, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Nobody likes interruption, right? You come to service, you sing five songs, or well, it's odd to hear five. You know, usually it's like two or three other places, you know, <laughs> we can go on. But usually it's a routine, there's a, there's a formula. Disrupt that, and people get uncomfortable. Amen? And you know why that happens? Well, it's a title of this method. Right? Title of this method is, I will engage. Hallelujah. And the reason you get uncomfortable is because you don't like to engage. Amen? Amen. Now say that with me. I, 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 I will engage. Will engage. Okay. That is taking action. Right? You, you just made a pact with God that you will engage. Right? I will engage. Right? Which is the very opposite of what believers are taught to do. Don't engage. Just love. Right? And I'm going to explain the verse, but I, I, I need to lay down the groundwork. When we talk about defending the faith, people get upset about it, right? About defending the faith. You hear it. The Bible doesn't need to be defended. Amen. Well, then why did God give you a mouth? Amen. Why did he tell you to study? Amen. Why did he tell you to show yourself approved? Amen. Why does he anoint you? Why does he equip you? Amen. Why does he sharpen you? If not, to engage. Amen? But people don't like it makes Christian. I'm gonna talk a lot of Christianese for you guys. <laughs> so you can understand it. Right? Christianese tell you, don't engage. Right? You just read it, Pastor. Right? Father, my brother, be strong and power in the Lord. Right? Put on the whole arm of God. Right? Because we wrestle not against flesh and blood. It said it right there, plain in English. We wrestle not against flesh and blood, so, you know, we don't do our battling in flesh and blood, face to face, right? And you're comfortable with that. And because you have gotten comfortable with that, I'm not saying go out there and start a fight. All right? Let, let's be very clear what the Word of God says. Okay? But I want to lay this down for you, Right? People get upset about defending the faith. We don't like the idea of apologetics. We don't like the idea uh, 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 about being right. Now, I'm not talking about when you're right. You, you don't get upset when you're right. You get upset when the word of God is right. It's a difference. When you're right, you go toe to toe. Have you ever been right? <laughs> you know you're right. Right? Even the most timid person becomes a roaring lion. Right? I'm right, I'm right, I'm right. But when the will of God is right, you become apologetic. Mm. Don't engage. Don't attack. It's got to be a different way. Let's, 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 let's compromise. Let's talk about this. Mm. Right? Yeah. But you see it your way and I see it my way. And we agree to disagree. That famous term, right? We agree to disagree. 
Have you ever been in a situation, right, and, and, and you're like, okay, we agree to disagree. Did that solve anything? No. no. Never solves anything. Right? Because you're not happy. The other individual is not happy, right? Mm -hmm. And the wrong was never corrected, right? I, I'm just saying. Don't shoot the messenger. All right? I, I just deliver the word. I'm just a chauffeur. I, I bring it to you. Amen? We have a problem with that. We have a problem with engaging with someone ideology, right? Their doctrine, right? This is my doctrine, right? And we dare not engage because we might offend. Or worst case scenario, they might not like you. And we have become a people of God that's based our growth and power on how many likes we get. And who likes us? Right? If the church is well known, then that means you must be doing everything right. It's growing. Right? People have nothing but nice things to say about you. I worry when people have nothing but nice things to say about me because I'm not a nice person. You know, but it's not about me, it's about you. Amen? <laughs> so people get real Amen. interested in me. But how about you, who's sitting there? You, who's listening? Mm -hmm. This is about you. See, because I don't have a problem engaging, and the Lord keeps teaching me that, how to engage more and more. Amen? We do this, right? You don't engage. You don't like to engage. You become very apologetic. And we do this because of the 11th commandment. You want to know what the 11th commandment is? I tell you. You say all the time, thou shalt be nice. <laughs> right? Be nice. Right? Next to the word Christian, it says, nice. <laughs> nice. Right? The 11th commandment, thou shalt be nice. You forget about the 10th, but you remember the 11th. Amen? There are Christians that if they see you engaged furiously in an issue, right? Have you ever been, have you ever debated with someone about an issue, yes. right? And, and, and you get, the fire gets kindled. Amen. You're passionate about it, right? They're a Christian, they, if they see you furiously engaged in an issue, let's say, for example, this is just example. Let's say, the example is that they see you engage, and the example is abortion, right? And you're debating about the issue about abortion, and you're less than kind. There are Christians that are more offended about you being less kind than the issue about babies being killed in the womb. Amen. Amen. I'm going to say that again. Yeah. You engage in the issue. You are passionate. You're bringing it. You're, you're laying down the hammer. Right? And you're passionate. Now your demeanor might not be that which they expect. Because they're always expected to be, thou shalt be nice. Right? And there are Christians that will take that and they will be more upset with you because you, you could have said that better. You didn't have to say that so confrontational. <laughs> Don't you know the 11th commandment? What's the matter with you? You're a Christian. You're supposed to be meek and humble. And they're more upset about that than the billions of unborn children that are being laid to the slaughter. They are being killed. Amen. Hey, I'm just... Amen. I'm just letting you know how it goes. Right? <laughs> they will feel completely justified on attacking you because of that. They will attack you because you were not kind. 
They would judge you on that. Right? They won't care about the sixth commandment. Let me refresh your memory. What's the sixth commandment? Thou shalt not kill. They won't care about that. You can lay the argument to the billions upon billions of abortions that are happening left and right, and they don't care about that. They care that you were not nice. Right? Why do you have to do that? Don't go there. You didn't have to engage. You could have just that famous line, to pray for the brother. <laughs> pray for the sister. We do a battling on our knees. Okay. All right. Okay. Let's continue. It's crazy how that happens, right? How they could get mad at you. And they'll justify their anger on you. Right? Because you didn't uphold the 11 commandment. Because as a Christian, you're supposed to be dumb, naive, ignorant, uneducated. You're supposed to be someone who just, by God's grace, got saved and that's all you're good for. Man, just be nice and do good, go do good works. Go build some orphanage. Go dig a well. Hmm. But don't talk about issues that matter. Because you don't know anything about that. And you've been taught, don't engage. Don't, you know, you got to leave them, leave them alone. That they, they're going to do what they're going to do. Right? Okay. Whether it's the issue of abortion or homosexuality, yes, I said it, or whatever it is, right? People will come at you and say, the reason we have these problems is because of people like you. Because if you were more loving, oh, oh, I get it. So the problem is not Solomon, not being a Solomon. The problem is that we're not more loving uh -oh. towards the sodomite. It blows my mind. Be more loving towards the pedophile. This is why in some places they're approving pedophilia because they say he's not a problem. He's just loving. She's just loving. It is a love thing. Love them. How much did the church love to look at the state the church is in? Mm -hmm. Amen. I know, like, at least a couple of people just turned off on Facebook. <laughs> That's fine. <clears throat> right? So, we have a problem. Because we don't like this type of language. We don't like to engage in battle. And in fact, the mere word battle, it, it has a negative taste. It's even a negative taste in your mind. Why does Pastor keep saying battle? He's telling me not to fight, but he's telling me to engage. We're not supposed to do that. We're only supposed to be loving people. Well, let's see what the Bible says about that, shall we? Right? Because you can debate with me all you want. You can disagree with me all you want. You can turn off your mind and show off the phone and, oh, fine. But what you cannot debate with is the facts, right? Even in the courtroom, right? Everyone's proving this until the facts come out, right? Show me the facts, right? I say it this way. The word of God does not come back void. They go away and come. But when the word of God speaks, you can debate with me all you want, but when God says it, see, your problem is not with me. Your problem is with God. I'm just the deliverer. So, we need to get to the bottom of this. Because Ephesians fi says, finally, that's an end. Finally means Enough. 
Mm -hmm. Right? Have you ever got to that point? When you're like, I, I, I finally have enough of this. I'm done. I'm finished. If you're a parent, you know what I'm talking about. Kids push you to that point, you're like, enough. Amen. Right? You're married, you get to that point, you're like, enough. Enough. You have enough. Paul starts in saying, finally. In other words, enough. My brother, my brethren, those who are in Christ Jesus, enough. Be strong in the Lord and in his power. Hallelujah. And in the power of his might, he said. Yeah. Be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. That doesn't sound like someone who's saying, hey, <laughs> let's pray about it. <laughs> hey, <laughs> calm down. I want no problem. Right? As many Christians say, yo, why you talk to that person? I don't want no problem now. But you know what they're doing is wrong. I, I just don't want no problem. I have enough on my plate. Yeah, the, what you have on your plate is that you are non-confrontational. And it just keeps piling on and piling on. I know I'm, 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 I'm preaching something totally contradicts to what you've been taught. Right? Very different from what you, you've been fed all your life. Just be meek. Be that meek lamb. Well, if you read Revelation, that lamb is Come fierce. Hallelujah. Amen. If you read the, the, the word of God, that lamb is not one to be trifled with. Yep. I'm going to prove it to you through the word of God. He says, finally, pull on the whole arm of God. That you may be able to stand against what? The ways of the devil. See, pastor, it's a spiritual. Well, okay, so who the devil influences? Who does the devil use? If the devil was there in front of me, then I'd call Jesus and I'd be like, handle it. But he's using people, so I gotta deal with people. Mm -hmm. yep. Pastor, see what's behind them. I do, but he's using you. <laughs> and I cannot let you go. Why? You know why? Because deep down I am loving. And I can't let you go astray. So I gotta confront you. I gotta make you feel uncomfortable. I gotta let you see who's dealing with you, who's manipula manipulating you, who's stringing you along. Amen. And I gotta come and bring that, turn the mirror around so you can look at yourself and go, oh, that's hideous. Mm -hmm. So I have to be strong in the Lord and in his power. Paul, when he writes this, he's describing a Roman soldier who is ready to engage in battle. Does he not go through the whole armor? Does he not say, prepare yourself, gird your, your loins here, let's go. Grab the shield, grab the sword, grab your feet. He starts going through everything. People are like, that's just a spiritual description. That is a man or a woman who has the full armor. It's not for looks. It's not for you to stand and look pretty. Amen. You don't have the power of God. Be strong in the Lord and in his power for you to waste it, for you just to stand Amen. there. For people just to get intimidated and go, no, it is for action. Amen. Amen. It is for you to engage. Right? The metaphor number one it, it, it is, is to wrestle. It's hand-to-hand -hand combat. You got to understand there, a, a Roman soldier... Right? They didn't have the weapons that we have here that we fight from miles away. It was face to face. It was hand to hand. It was, I got a shield, I got a sword, and I am engaged for life. I am engaged because this is life or death. Someone has to die. Someone is going to walk out of here. Someone is not. But since I am empowered by his strength. I'm not backing down. I'm not going anywhere. You're going to have to deal with me. And to deal with me, you're going to have to come face to face with me. And to come to face to face with me, to beat me, you got to be willing to do what I do daily. What? Die. Mm. Hallelujah. Mm. Amen. Mm. Thank you, Lord. Oh, this, this is good stuff. Yeah. This, this is good stuff. <laughs> This is not baby food. This, this, this is rice and beans. Hallelujah. Amen. <laughs> yep. 
This is not milk. This is meat. You don't like combat language? Take your loving God. Maybe you forgot who God is. Exodus 15 3 says this The Lord is a man of war. The Lord is his name. Come on now. Oh. Mm -hmm. I don't like this type of language, Pastor. Amen. That was the God of the Old Testament. Amen. Amen. You have no idea who's going to part the skies. Amen. You have no idea whose robe is drenched in blood, carrying a mighty sword, coming to the heavens. Hallelujah. You have no idea Amen. when the skies open up and he come, and you're like, is that meek my Jesus? Amen. They go, no, that's the wrath of God coming down. Amen. Amen. That's the one that you guys crucified. That's the one you denied. That's the one that you refused to engage when he told you to engage. So you know who he's coming for? Coming for you. We're supposed to be Christian. Just be happy singing your songs and passing the plate around for collections and, and <laughs> say your hey man and hallelujah and get out of there. <laughs> Don't engage in the world. Don't go out there. Don't rough up the the the, the status the what is it? What is it? Status the status quo. quo. Don't don't do that. Well, Psalms eighteen thirty four says this. He teaches my hands to Come walk Amen. so that so that a bow of steel is broken by my arm. Come on. That's so much joy. Hey, I'm glad that baby got it. That baby just clapped and said, yeah, amen. Because the children, and the brothers won't speak, it'll come out of the mouth of the children. At least she got it and she said, I'm strong. I'll do it. I'll break the bow. Amen. Yes. Psalms. He teaches my hands to war. Yep. So that a bow of steel is broken by my arms. That's someone who's taking it. That's someone who's not afraid to engage. What's your problem? What do you have against me? Mm. Why do you hate me? Why do you tell me to close my mouth when I speak about God? Who are you? Or you, you make me uncomfortable. That's right. <laughs> because I represent light. Amen. Amen. I represent justice. I represent holiness. I represent God. I am a representative of the Almighty. And He gives me strength. And He trains my hand for war. You sure you want to engage me? Because I'm not moving. That's old. Fine, let's go to the New Testament. <laughs> Roman 13, 4 says this. For he is a minister of God to thee for good. But if thou do that which is evil, be afraid. For he, what? Brother, that the sword in vain. For he is a minister of God and vengeance to execute wrath upon what? Him that does evil. Does that sound? Does that sound like a Christian who's like, hey man, here's a lily. Peace, love, I got no problem. I got no quarrel with you. You can go on sending all you want. And you know, just sitting over there as long as you don't come over here, man. Or is that a Christian who goes like this? Hey, hey, I am a minister of the Most High. Hallelujah. I cannot let evil go free. You, 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 you want to go home because this is making you uncomfortable. Because I'm bringing it right to your doorstep. Because for years you have allowed evil to run rampant under the banner of love, under the banner of peace, under the banner like, I don't have, no, I don't want no problem. And God says, yeah. no, 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 I call you. I call you to be a representative. I call you to fight. I call you to war. Amen. I call you to speak. I call you to stand. And I call you to engage. 
And the reason your life is not going well is because you refuse to engage in the battle. Got another one for you. <laughs> Jude. Jude 1 says this. Jude, the servant of Jesus Christ. He's telling you, he's a Christian. Amen. And brother to James, another Christian. To them, you are sanctified by God, the Father, and for serving Jesus Christ and court. That's all you guys. Right? Mercy unto you and peace and love be multiplied. Be loved. When I gave all Genesis to write unto you. Of the what? Comments are written. It was needful for me to write unto you and exhort you that ye show what? Honestly, content for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints. Do you know what contempt means? It means to face off, to battle. James is telling you the. James is telling you not to take it lightly. James is saying there's going to be people around you are going to change and twist the word of God, and it's up to you what? To battle. It's up to you to say, that's not right. That's not what the word of God says. I don't care how, who it bothers. I don't care who offends. I don't, I don't need to offend you. The Bible offends enough. The Bible is offensive. All I got to do is speak it. All I got to do is open. Just open it up and you're going to see at least five people back away from you. <laughs> go on the train. Go on the bus. Open your Bible. Start reading it. You, I, I guarantee you, you're going to see a mother grab her and her three kids or four kids and be like, let's go. It's offensive. <laughs> Right? James is telling you, hey man, content for the faith. That means battle, fight, confront, face off. This is not the way it's supposed to be. I'm not letting you get away with that. You're not going to mistreat this. You're not going to misquote this. This is the way we live. Hallelujah. This is what we believe. And I don't care if you get upset or bothered or hot under the collar. God called you the battle. Even Paul had a problem with it. In nah. 2 Corinthians 10, Paul is like, hey, I, Paul, myself, beseech you by the meekness and gentleness of Christ. That's beautiful. Mm. When the present I base among you, but being absent, I'm bold towards you, that's, that's Paul being sarcastic. Yeah. Mm. Amen. That's Paul saying, Hey, you saying that I was meek and, 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 and fearful, yep. but then when I write I'm bold? No, no, no. He says, in other words, this is me paraphrasing, I'm going to take care of this when I go over there. Because <laughs> I'm not just brave on paper. Hallelujah. I'm not just brave when I'm writing letters in the Bible here. I was bold when I was over there. So when I get over there, I'm going to deal with this. Mm. Right? Even in another chapter, he says, hey, I miss you, I long for you. But I heard <laughs> that, me paraphrasing again, I heard that you were talking smack. I heard that you lying. I heard that you gossiping about me. When I get over there, we're going to deal with this because I am a man of God. Amen. Hmm. That, that's a threat. That's a threat. You see, you, you're comfortable with people talking about you, and you don't want no problem. Oh, uh, she calls herself a Christian. That's right, I am a Christian. You got a problem with that? You ever confront someone with that? Huh. You're a Christian? Yes. <laughs> I believe in Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. And? You know what they're going to do? No, no, I'm just uh -huh. saying, no, that, that's okay. <laughs> right? But you, 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 you're taught to, oh, you, you're a Christian? Well, yeah, you know, we all believers. Mm. Right? I mean, you know, your God, my God, his God, she, his God, their God, mm -mm. we God, mm -mm. he God, she God, mm -mm. it's all the same. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Right? No. Boy, it's like, no, 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 no. There's wolves among you. No, no, I'm, I'm going to deal with them. The only way to deal with it is to kill them. Get them out of here. 
Get them out. That's confrontation. You know, like an like a ex-president Trump used to say when they were you ratty and they start chanting like crazy, he would be like, get them out. Don't leave them there. Get them out. Right? The other half just went like, oh. Sorry. <laughs> I'm showing you through the word of God. Jeremiah 51.20 says this. You should highlight these things. Jeremiah 51.20 says this. You are my hammer and weapon of war. Hallelujah. With you I break nations in pieces. With you I destroy kingdoms. Does that sound like a God that just wants you to warm your seat? Does that sound like a God that just wants your bank account to grow and for you to have all your bills paid and be comfortable in your four walls and isolated and never go out and never talk to no one and never confront no one and just be peaceful and just be thankful that you're safe and sanctified and you're going to heaven. Leave me alone. I'm good. No, 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 no. He says, listen, you are my hammer. You are my weapon of war. There's that word again. Amen. It's amazing how many times in the Bible. With you, I break nations. If you don't represent in war, this is why the nation is the way it is. And I'm going to explain that. I'm going to explain how that happened. He says, not only will you break the nations, you will destroy kingdoms. Pastor, this Hallelujah. is spiritual. No, this is physical. This is the natural. Didn't he say we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against prince and principalities, high places? But who are in these high places? Who's ruling in these high places? Right? You're trying to fight the devil while his minions run rampant. You don't want to fast and pray because that's the easy way out for some people. Right? I'll pray. Liar. No, you won't. <laughs> I'll fast. Wrong. No, you won't. Come on, let's go march to the Capitol and, and let them know that the, that the body of Christ is alive and well and strong. You're crazy, Pastor. They just called the day of fast and joy on Twitter and, and, and that'll be it. Yay. And I get a thumbs up. Don't, ru don't ruffle them. They'll take your 501 and 3CB out away. Oh no. They might come and close down the church. They did. Some of you are still on Zoom. No, don't get me wrong. I'm not, I'm not at war with people. I'm at war with the ideas and the concept and what you allowed them to get away with. <laughs> because they're a soul that needs salvation. But Amen. how do they know they need salvation if the truth keeps running away from them? Hallelujah. How do they know they need a savior when he calls the saints to war and that means get up out of the face and, and this is what the word of God says. No, if they're not there, then you know what? You give them the right and the power to do and to pass law and to do what they seem fit in their own eyes. Then you complain about it. And you call for a savior when God says, I sent you. What happened to my hammer? What happened to my weapon? Why should I empower you? Why should you have the strength of Almighty God if you're not going to do nothing? Why should I indulge you with the spirit? Why should I pour my spirit upon you if you're just going to sit there? When I called you the battle. I'm at war with anything that stands opposite against the word of God. If it's against the word of God, then I am at war with it. And I will not say sorry for it. Amen. And I will not back down from it. And I will not justify it. I will just defend it. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. See, the enemy is very slick. He makes you have an aversion to the very combat that God commanded you to fight. Right? Because I'm, I'm talking a lot about fighting the war and deep down you're going like this. That sounds good, Pastor, but I ain't doing nothing. 
That sounds beautiful, Pastor. Woo, yeah, war. Yeah, good. You gonna do it? No. Because nothing good comes out of the war. Didn't you hear the guys that got the war? Didn't even war break out in the heavens? And did God say, hey man, I want no problem with you guys. I got no beef with you guys. Just, to, just take a third and be okay. And I'll sit here in my corner. You have yours and I have mine. No, you know what the word of God said? It said that war broke out in the heaven. And there was no room found for them. And Michael fought against him. Yeah. Right? And yeah. he got hurled to the earth. Yeah. A long world. And God created a place for them. Yeah. Does that sound <laughs> like a God? There's an old man in a white robe with a long beard sitting there in a wheelchair with crippled yeah. trying to walk. No, that's an almighty God. That's an all-powerful God. That's Alpha and Omega. Hallelujah. The baby's move with his finger that's the whole right. universe for you. You gotta be kidding me. Praise your name. Hallelujah. You Christians gotta wake up and stop being so Christian either and be like, no, no, no. Wrong is wrong. Right is right. Amen. Can you prove it? I'll prove it to the word of God over and over again. Well, I don't like that. Take it up with him. But let me just forewarn you that I am his sword. I am his hammer. I am his weapon. And if you look this way, you are engaging me. You are threatening me. And I don't take that lightly. For I am a representative of the kingdom of the Most High. Amen. And anything that goes against his word, I got a problem with. Because he will hold me accountable. Amen. That's right. Because I bear his name. I am anointed. I am chosen. And I got to give a report. And in case you didn't know, I fear him more than I fear you. Yeah. Because the Bible tells me, don't fear who can kill the body, but fear him that can kill both the body and the soul. soul. Last yeah. time I checked, you couldn't kill my soul. Yeah. No matter how much you yeah. tried, no matter how many hexes yeah. you threw my way, or curses you threw my way, or spells you threw my way, and, or people yeah. you came against, try to get against me. None of it! Amen. Amen. But he can. Yeah. Mama didn't raise no fool. I know who I side with. I know who I serve. I know who he's anointed. Brother, put on the full armor of the Lord. It's not for you to take a picture with. It's not for you to take a selfie with and join on Facebook. It's not for you to see how many lights you get because you look cool. I got the full, I love these people that come up with the full armor. I got the full armor of God. Whoa, yeah, whoa, yeah. Then they go right back to the sin, never confront no one. And they see sin happen right in front and they go like this. Well, you know, <laughs> that's them. Mm -hmm. Don't look that way. Don't, children, don't look that way. No, children, look, that's evil. Mm -hmm. Don't say it that loud. They might hear you. They might just march in front of your church or something. Well, this is what, what happens, you see? See, the world got it right. They went like this, Paul, oh, right? What does he say? Pull out the storm on the Lord. Pull out the form on the Lord, right? You wrestle not against Prince of there. But they are mighty what? For the pull down of what? Strongholds, right? Okay. All right, see, you, you have no concept of why it's bringing down a stronghold. Bringing down a stronghold means that you go to war, you cease war, right? The enemy goes into his stronghold, right? He, he shuts the war. Think about like old time, right? The, the castle, they shut the door. Now, they may have food there for years. How long is this battle going to be? Well, <laughs> see, the enemy knew that. So he would wage war and he just camped outside for a long time. Right? We'll get the Bibles out of school. Hmm. I got eternity. I'll stay here forever. Yep. Right? Right? Right. No? Yeah. Right. Yeah. right? We'll open up more abortion clinics in your neighborhood, regardless of what you say. Mm. Yep. Hmm? We'll open up more methadone clinics. Doesn't matter. Will, will they do that in the rich neighborhood? Mm -hmm. Let me answer that for you. No. no, no, no. Right? 
But he encamped, he stood there, he's like, just run them down, they'll stay there, they'll stop. Let's call up every corner. No. See, they do that, right? But when we're called to do that, we're called to say, oh, you want to play that game? We'll wage war, we'll go and camp. We'll go march around City Hall. See, you people think you march around City Hall one day, or you have it ready for one day, right? That's not what the LGBT did. They, they, they kept on going, and kept on knocking, and kept on knocking, and kept on knocking, and kept on knocking. And the Christians said, yeah, we did one good march, hooray, God in the city. <laughs> well, I'm not going to get heat for that one. <laughs> Don't worry, we bought you shirts. <laughs> and what did that prove? And what did that accomplish? <laughs> Let me tell you what that accomplished. Nothing. Amen. Nothing. Publicity for you. Mm -hmm. Not for the kingdom of God, because if it was that great, right, you would have torn down those strongholds. You would have wreaked havoc in the city. The man, the governor, the president would have bowed down to me because he said, you are the hammer, you are the weapon, and you will bring down kingdoms. Amen. I, I know what I'm talking about. Because as believers, right, you got used to these, these early Christians running away. These Christians were bold. These Christians were tough. These Christians, if you said something contrary to the word of God, they were up in your face. What did you say? It's like when that mother hears a kid curse, and they go, they could be far away, and they go, what was that? <laughs> and you see mama coming down the hall, and you go, hmm, I gotta run. That's right. That's the way it should be with every believer. What did you say about my God? Amen. What did you say about the word of God? Say that to my face. Bring it to my attention. Come on. See, you, you were taught, don't engage. And God says, I prepare you for war. Where would I give you a full armor? Mm. It makes no sense, right? Oh, no, that's for us to preach the gospel. That's for us to, to, to stand light and, and, and holy and real Christian eating. Jesus loves you, man, just the way you are. No, Jesus doesn't love you just the way you are. Come on now. Mm. Yeah. You're in transgression, he doesn't love you. If you're in sin, he doesn't love you. The Bible says that he's mad with the sinners every day, every night. He's mad with me. And I preach the word of God. <laughs> right? That's how strong he is. He's like, you better get your act together. I'm like, I'm trying, Lord. I'm fighting. I don't want the armor taken away because if I'm not going to use it, why should I have it? Yep. Yep. Why have a sword if you don't use it? Yep. To look cool, to keep it in the sling. And don't, Paul said, don't, I have, he just, did we just read it? Hey, I have a stone. Make me bring this sword out. Because if this sword comes out of his holster, if it comes out of his sleeve, someone is going to get it. Amen. Don't test me. Don't challenge me. Because I don't have a problem engaging. I am called to engage. You're doing it wrong, I'm going to call you out. Right? Don't call me out. Don't do it wrong. Don't call me out. Stop talking about me. Stop gossiping about me. Yeah. Stop murmuring about me. Stop lying about me. Stop saying that I'm a weak Christian. Stop saying that I'm nothing. No, that's not going. That's not going. No. I can't stand for that. I'm a chosen son and daughter of the Most High. I have authority in high places. You just don't treat me like trash. You don't treat my representative like trash, the one who sent me, the one who ordained me, the one who called me. Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. You, you, <coughs> how dare you? As believers, that's why the Bible says, be ready in season and out of season. I'm not saying you go around Please listen to me. I'm not saying when you get out of here because I see some of your eyes. Don't get out of here and go around, you know, running up to people. 
<laughs> I'm, back. No, 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 I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about when confronted, right? When the lies in front of you, when the sins in front of you, you don't back down. That is sin. I don't think that's sin. The word of God says it's sin. I'm not apologizing for it. It is what it is. It is written. It is done. Amen. That's why. That's why your people are so mean. That's why you're going to hell. Gotcha. And I'm not. <gasps> well, this passage is offending everybody left and right. <laughs> something, something. Uh, what's wrong with him? Who irked him? Who bothered him? Who didn't give their ties? Who didn't sing well enough? No, no, it has nothing to do with that. It has to do that we got to stop being so naive. That's right. And God wants his church to wake up. And God wants his church to understand that his church, his bride, is not a pushover. His bride is mighty. Yes, she's a bride. Yes, she's delicate. But she is a force to be reckoned with. Hallelujah. Because she belongs to him. And if anyone touches her, they touch him. And if anyone tries to defile her or mess with her, he comes with 10,000 upon 10,000 upon 10,000 upon 10,000 of his angels with fierce force, mighty and powerful, bringing down strongholds, wreaking havoc. Why? Because he is a jealous God, and he loves his bride, and he died for his bride, and he doesn't take that lightly. And he doesn't take it lightly that he died for you, and you're passive. He doesn't take it lightly. He died for you. So he doesn't want you moping around just taking everything that comes your way with a grain of salt. It's like, it's okay. It's, no, it's not okay. No, it's not okay. No, it's not okay. And this is why the world laughs, right? Just be more loving. How did that work out for the last... For the last decade. How? They didn't. They used it against you, right? You're supposed to be loving. Why are you so aggressive? Because you're trampling on what I see as holy. Why are you taking it so personal? Because you're mocking my father. Hallelujah. Why are you taking the heart? Because you're denying the very faith that I believe in. What's wrong with you? Just love them. And they got what? Bibles out of school? Transgenders in charge of school? Mm -hmm. Gotta be careful because Facebook might shut off. They might block me. Right? Because we didn't speak loud enough. Now your speech is being taken away. Because we didn't proclaim the, Jesus, the name of Jesus loud enough. Now we dare not say it in the street. We dare not march in the street and proclaim his name and say he's holy. He is the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He is the Alpha and the Omega. He's the one and true God. No, be acceptable. Except everybody. No, is that what the early Christians did? No, they did not. Did the old Christians do it? No, they did not. Did God allow that ever? Let me answer that for you. Never. Amen. I serve a God of war, oh, of power, of might. He has trained my hands. He has equipped me. He has molded me to be a champion for him. He has molded you to be a champion for him. You are his hands. You are his legs. You are his voice. Speak loudly. Do not be ashamed. To stand bold and courageous. Call evil, evil. And good, good. And don't you dare apologize for it. Amen. I know I'm coming out strong. Don't you dare. I'm, you hear I'm sorry I have to tell you. I'm not sorry. If you're a thief, you're a thief. I'm not sorry. Don't say, don't say that he's a junkie or she's a junkie. You're a junkie, you're a junkie. 
Get right with God, you junkie. Well, that's offensive. That's racist. We become so ignorant that we think that everything in this generation, all these millennials think everything is racist. It's racist. Pastor, that's racist. Pastor, you're racist. <coughs> really? And I tell them, that's impossible. I can't be racist. And last time I checked, there's only one race. Last time I checked, we all came from Adam. Yep. Descendants of Adam. Last time I checked, it's only the human race. What race are you from? So it's impossible to be racist. You talking about ethnicity? You know, you're talking about different cultures? Is that what you're talking about? Different cultures are different cultures. God bless them. God, thank God we have them. But there's only one race. And that's the human race. I don't know where you came from. Maybe you came from Mars or something. I don't know. But I can't be racist. What I am is jealous for the word of God. What I am is steadfast for the word of God. What I am is on fire for the word of God. What I am is sanctified, holy, anointed, chosen by God. Amen. Just like you are. Hallelujah. Just like you are. Amen. Mm -hmm. Because when we get up there, he's not going to say, hey, race, hey, uh, color. No, no, no. We're either going to be his or not. He's either going to say, you belong to me, you're either my children or you're not. No. Male, female, black, white. you either his or you're not. You're either for fam or you didn't. Mm -hmm. you either brought down kingdom and, and, and prince palace or you did not. You either siege war on strongholds, and that means you kept you encamped around it, you know, just like they do. Right? They took the very weapon you should be doing and maybe be afraid of it when they do it. We should be encamping, we should be marching, we should be pointing out. We should be writing letters to Congress left and right. Everybody. Imagine with the whole body of Christ. Roll a letter to the assembly. Roll a letter to Congress. Roll a letter to those that you know you wrote in. Right? The male would not be able to keep up. The white flag will go up immediately. Cause they will see votes. We will see victory. I know it's fine. But it's possible. And I believe that God's calling us in this decade, in this time, in this season, to rise up where it starts in your home. It starts with you. It starts with those around you. Right? Because there's strength in numbers. It starts with the church. Instead of fighting each other and talking about each other, getting together with each other. That's why it says, don't forget to gather with the brethren. There's strength when you gather with the brethren. There's strength when you worship. There's strength when you praise, when you come together. You don't talk about each other, but you, yeah, if there's a problem, then you confront it. That's what the word of God says. Bring it to the elders. Bring it to the pastor. Bring it to, bring it in front of the church. Do what you got to do, but deal with it. Amen. And you become stronger and mighty. Because then the world says that they see a place that cannot be pushed around. You see a mighty giant <clears throat> equipped for battle. And believe me, they know who they want to fight and who they don't. They know who they want to engage and who they don't want to engage. If you're divided, they will engage quickly. If you're strong and solidified together, united, they will not even dare engage. They will send a piece of paper saying, what is your demand? Amen? Amen. So engage. But engage with your sin first. Yeah. Before you go waging war, war, engage with your sin first. Wreak war on that. Wreak havoc on that. 
bring it down. Destroy it, that's the word God says. Be the hammer that he called you to be. Take the sword that he gave you. Chop it to pieces, never to be seen again. Right? Because once you're free, there's nothing stopping you. There's nothing that the accuser can accuse you of. Let me say that again. Once you're free, there's nothing the accuser can accuse you of. He has no weapons to throw at you. But you have all the arsenal because you have the word of God. And you go marching and saying, with a sunset free, it's, it's free, free indeed. indeed. Amen. And there's nothing that can stop me. For I am strong in the Lord. Amen. Amen. Let's stand. Don't be offended with me. Uh, and if you are, then get on your knees and deal with God. I believe that God is doing something mighty and powerful in the church this year. He started. He started in this church and started in many other churches. But God is dealing with them. And God is equipping them and raising them up for what's coming. And he doesn't want weak Christians. He doesn't want apologetic Christians going and apologizing all over the place for the word of God. For what he said is holy. For what he said is right. God is raising men and women that will not, not twist the word of God, but will stand on it firmly with their full armor, ready for battle, ready for the fight, ready to engage. Those are the ones that he's looking for. Those are the ones that he will call home. Those are the ones that he will say, well done, good and faithful servant. Not be ashamed of the gospel ever. But it is power unto salvation. Hallelujah. And yes, and that is love in its purest form. Amen. And that's why we engage. Why? Because we love you. Because we don't want to see you go by the way. We don't want to see you go on the broad. We want to see you on the narrow. And the way it might hurt it is well worth it when you cross over. Amen? Amen. Amen. Let's pray. Father, I ask you in Jesus' name, I thank you for your word coming forward, Lord God. I thank you, Father God, that we will not be, Father God, weak, Father God, sheep going to the soil, Father God, but we will be like lions, Lord God, in your kingdom, Father God, fighting the good fight of faith, Father God, marching in your army, Father God, ready in season and out of season, Father God, to engage to battle, Father God. For indeed, it is an honor and a privilege to be in your army. It is an honor and a privilege to be your son and your daughter, Father God, to be equipped with the gospel, to have the sword, to have the shield, to have the helmet, Father God, to have the belt, to have the sandals, Father God. It is an honor, Father God, that you give that to us freely, Lord God, so that we can battle, Father God, that we are the hammer, Father God, they are arms are strong enough, Father God, to break, Father God, steal, Father God, to bend those bows and break them, Father God. That we should not be ashamed of the gospel ever in our life, Father God. That we should not apologize for speaking the truth, Father God. For you call us to speak the truth. You call us to preach the gospel to the nation, Father God. And the gospel does offend. And the gospel does cut to the bone in the marrow, Father God. I thank you, Father God, that boldness is rising up in them. That boldness is rising up to them, Father God. That that fire, Father God, is being kindled in them like never before, Father God. That that fire is being stirred up in them, Father God. For them, Father God, to march, Father God, in faith and in power. We have called them, Father God. And you give them your power, your strength, Father God. But it's not in our strength, but it's in your strength, Father God. Hallelujah. It is in our weakness that you are strong and mighty, Lord God. Lord. And we give you glory and honor, Father God, for what you're doing in our life, Father God. And we give you thanks, Father God, that we will call those things that are evil, evil in our life first and foremost, Father God. And not give the enemy a foothold in our life, Father God. But we will kick him out, Lord God. Yes, Lord. Yeah. Then we will march boldly, Father God. And we will storm, Father God, the very gates of hell, Father God, if need be, Father God. 
but we will not back down, Lord God. Yes, Lord. For you did not back down when the cross came. You did not back down at Calvary. Amen. But you said, it is done. Hallelujah. It is finished. Hallelujah. And you battle through the end, Father God. Let us battle that way, Lord God, to the very end, Father God, until you call us home to be with you, Father God, until we see you face to face, Lord God, and there will be a glorious and a victorious day in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. And the people of God say, Amen. 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 And the Lord bless you this night. Amen. God bless you.